Hello, I'm Becky Trigier and today we're going to be looking at this box of mystery. So I probably complained a couple of times in various videos about how expensive art subscription boxes are, especially when they're coming from the USA, mainly because of the shipping and the exchange rate. And someone must have heard that call because they have made one in Australia. It's the first one by Cathartic, which I think is quite a cool name. And I could not resist. I had to get one of these. It was a Kickstarter campaign and the box costed $30 Australian and the shipping was free. Although I think for future boxes the shipping will be extra at about $5, so $35 all up I think. But yeah, I cannot wait to get into this. It just turned up in the mail now, so I am going to get it open and we shall see what's inside. I have no idea what's in here. I've managed to stay away from the stories and other posts that people have put up showing what's in here, so I just tried really hard to not see those. Let's have a look and see what we have. So you have an idea of the size of the box. I have half a Palletful Packs box here, which I've just been using as a tray. So you can see that the Palletful Packs is quite a lot larger and I can fit the cathartic box inside of it. But it's not always the size that matters. <laughs> so let's have a look and see what's inside. Ooh, how nice. Oh, there's even a personalized card in here. Hello Rebecca, I just wanted to say thank you for supporting Cathartic by purchasing through our Kickstarter campaign, Love from Adrian. How lovely is that? That's really nice. Ooh, a bit of off-cut coloured paper here. Alright, so what's inside? It's always exciting. Who doesn't love a mystery box? Let's see what we have in here. Oh, art spectrums. I think I might pull everything out first and then we'll look at everything in depth. A brush. A lovely sticker. Well, I'm very glad there's a sticker in here because I was wondering if I was going to be able to pull the sticker off here and it looks pretty well stuck on there so I am just going to put this to one side as well. And looks like there's some weeding material here. So I'll put that to one side. We've got a little color wheel. And one more thing. No, a few more things here. We have a lovely artwork here. And some paper. I'll just move all of this out of the way and then we'll take a look at it a bit more closely. So firstly, a quick look at this pretty little artwork. And on the back, it looks like it is by the creator of Cathartic, Adrian Bishop, who lives in Sydney. I shall just pop that there so you can have a quick read. Next up we have the card with all of the products on here. So we have this is Canson Montval watercolour paper 300 GSM cold press. I'm guessing it is probably cellulose. I don't think it's cotton. There are one, two, three, four pieces. Four pieces of watercolour paper. I think this is a, a sticker and it's basically just a little colour wheel so I'm going to have to find somewhere to stick these two stickers. <laughs> we have a brush by Roymac and that is a Roymac Achiever round brush in a size 8. So that looks like it's a synthetic fibre. And it's made in India. There we go. Made in India. So I will definitely have to use that paintbrush. And here are the most expensive items, which are the Art Spectrum Artist watercolour tubes. There are three of them. So we have here Spectrum Blue, Spectrum Red, and Spectrum Yellow. I guess already has a Spectrum Red, a Spectrum Blue, and a Spectrum Yellow. Yep, I thought I had all three of them. I got these ages ago and they are in my Art Spectrum palette that I already have. So what I think I might do is put these ones back in here. And I think I might save these to do maybe a little giveaway or something. Um, because I know a lot of people can't get their hands on some art spectrum so I might hold these to one side for now because they're brand new tubes that are unopened and 
my ones are still quite full actually I haven't used these ones very much yet so I think I'll just open these and use these I will use these from the tubes rather than my existing pans so that we get the freshest paint possible and on here we also have a prompt this month's prompt is beautiful landscape all right so I'm gonna have to get my thinking cap on I will come back once I have come up with an idea because at the moment I've got nothing I will need to have a sit and think about what I'm going to paint with these I squeezed the paint out from the tubes onto a ceramic dish just a cheap one that I had lying around in the studio I usually pick them up from charity shops for one or two dollars and they're very handy this box did not come with a palette or anything so I had to use my own I decided to keep all four sheets for actual paintings so I just grabbed an old piece of paper out of my collection. It's watercolour paper, also cellulose, and here I am swatching out the colours. I also put down the pigment numbers there so that you can see what they are and also the names of them. The Spectrum Blue, for instance, is a mix of Ultramarine and Thalo Blue green shade. The Spectrum Red has a really long and unpronounceable name, but I am going to try and read it out now. Pyrazoloquinazolone Scarlet. Yeah, <laughs> pretty uncommon actually that one. And the yellow is a mix of aralide yellow and diaralide yellow, interestingly enough. So here I am mixing the primary colours into their secondary ones, so purple, orange and green. As you can see, because that Spectrum Blue has Ultramarine, it does make the blue a bit warmer and so the red is also quite leaning towards more of a vermilion or warmer orange colour. So it made a very muted purple and you can see that the orange came out quite nicely between the red and the yellow. But the yellow and the blue, once again that warm ultramarine has made a very very muted green. And last of all I'm just mixing all three and it took me a little while to get a neutral black, kind of more of a grey because that spectrum blue isn't actually that dark. And I am going to talk a little bit more about it when I start doing the paintings because it did hamper me a little bit. Here they all are once they're dried. You can see there's a bit of granulation in here. I'm pretty sure that's from the Ultramarine, the PB29 from that one. So yeah, it's showing up in the mix of all of them as well. But the red and yellow I don't think have very much, if any. I don't think any. There's a slight bit of texture there but I think that's actually from the paper same with the green so these are interesting colors I have a few different ideas that I'm going to work with today for my first painting using the Canson Montval paper I did cheat a little bit I will have to admit I was feeling a little bit nervous so I did grab a pencil and I really wanted to draw a bird so that's what I'm doing here I just decided for this first one that I would use a pencil but after this one I used only what was in the box, which is the paintbrush and the paints basically. I am painting a Australian King Parrot because they have this lovely scarlet, almost vermilion plumage and I thought it would be good to use with the Spectrum Red and I tried to add all of the colours into this one, mixing them to get different levels of shadow and also I struggled here with that green because the spectrum blue has ultramarine in it ultramarine is just not a good mixing color for making lovely bright secondary colors phthalo blue is so much better for that and this does have phthalo blue in it but the addition of the ultramarine really neutralized it a lot I was able to make quite a decent black out of it in the end. I had to make sure that the paints were not diluted whatsoever so that I could get a nice dark colour and you can see it worked quite well for the eye. Uh, I just thought I'd throw some random splotches onto the background because the Montval paper is made of cellulose and it does not hold water the way that cotton paper does and I'm so used to using cotton paper that it was really weird working with the cellulose paper and yeah I did have a bit of a struggle with that it's not that it's a bad paper it worked pretty well and and for cellulose paper it's actually one of the better ones that I've found because I've worked with some shocking papers out there but yeah once you've been using cotton 
you'll notice such a huge difference when you go back to cellulose. And the Montval paper is designed to be a student grade paper, so there is a huge difference between working with that and professional paper. I would go professional paper all the way now, but that's just me being a total snob. <laughs> so in my next painting, I just went straight in with the paint and I was a bit nervous because it's been quite a long time since I've done that. I did not tape the paper down as you can see and it warped like you would not believe. <laughs> it was so bad on this part. As you can see it's just turning itself into a half cylinder. But I just kept going. I just splotched a whole load of colour on there and it did absorb it and fade in so I let it dry and it actually flattened out again really well so that was good and then I'm just going in with another layer over the top. Now the Cancer Montval paper is designed for students so one of its properties is the easy ability to lift watercolour paint off it so if you make a mistake you can put more water on and then lift it off gently with uh, tissue or things like that so it's quite erasable and I think it, that's quite a good idea but I find it a little bit annoying just because it makes lower layers lift off when you're trying to add more oh, and I just wanted to get that really dark mix of the three again so I mixed it with the stick so I did pull that out of my collection as well because none of the colors are particularly dark in their tinting strength this was the darkest I could get and only if I put the paint down pretty much undiluted as soon as you started diluting it it got very very pale as you can see here so I did use the watercolor paint more a bit like gouache in some parts but then I used it like watercolor to get the more diluted shadows in the water and then I'm painting little sailboats so it's a sunset scene that's from a photograph I took a few years ago from a lovely place on the east coast of Australia called Eden this is Quarantine Bay really beautiful and idyllic and we'd rented a little motel cabin that went straight out onto this little beach here and it was fabulous. Oh, I wish I could go traveling again, I miss it so much. I would love to go back here one day. But yeah, that night we got a pretty wonderful sunset and of course my painting is a lot brighter than the actual sunset but that's the fun part of art. And I will be showing the final paintings at the end of this video if you stick around. So. The next one I'm doing here is another Australian landscape and this is a little bit closer to home to where I live. This is down on the Great Ocean Road which is on the most southern part of the mainland of Australia and you will see it coming in in a while. It's the rock formations called the Twelve Apostles and they're very famous in this part of the world. A lot of tourists come to see them every year. and. My husband and I went here last year for my birthday actually. We hadn't been for many years and so we thought we'd do a bit of a road trip. And I'm just painting another one of my photographs because I was thinking what kind of landscapes can I do that are beautiful and this is always one that sticks in my mind. It's a very iconic landscape for Australia or at least in the southern parts of Australia in the state of Victoria where I am. And down the bottom here is one of the rocks that actually collapsed about 10 or 15 years ago. I remember reading about that on the news. Just with the natural erosion from the ocean, it just fell into the water and now it's a pile of rubble. Yay! <laughs> but anyway, I was using that blue again and actually the normal colour that we get down here is a much cooler phthalo blue, almost more a phthalo turquoise, but Unfortunately, with the mix of that ultramarine in with the thalo blue to make the spectrum blue, it is far too warm and I could not get the right colour, but whatever. <laughs> it still looks like water, it's just maybe not quite as accurate a colouring as I would have liked. And I was getting in some of the beach there, a little bit of the shadow from where the water had run up and made the edge of the beach a bit wetter and I was just adding layers onto those rocks to try and get them to get darker on one side and also have a bit of lightness in some of the parts where the sun was shining on them. So this was just a case of layering it up and being patient. I'm not always very patient but I just tried very hard to get this right <laughs> and not just leave it. <laughs> So I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. 
because I was a bit concerned about doing this with no pencil and getting the shapes of the rocks right, that's why I did a few others before that. And I'm really glad that I just did this with a brush. It gave me a chance to try something that I don't normally do because normally I'm a little bit afraid to do and that is just go in with a brush and start painting. So it, this really did push me out of my comfort zone and I'm glad of that. I need to try and do this a bit more, just paint more loosely and naturally. And here I am very sorry I forgot to record some of it. I realized after when I hit the button that it had then started to record not stop recording and I don't know how I did that. I guess I was just getting a bit late in the day. But this is another scene that I have been to and it's in Uluru National Park. This is the other rock formation that a lot of people don't really know about and this is Katajuta which is about a 40 minute drive from Uluru itself or Ayers Rock as it was formerly called. Katajuta is also called the Olgas and it's a really awesome set of these roundy rocks that are just kind of in the middle of nowhere. And there's a lovely walk between the two. You can see there's a bit of a gap between the two on the right hand side, or the middle one on the right hand side. Um, there's this fabulous gorge and we walked through there and it's really, really beautiful. So I just made a bit of a mess of this one, I will admit. I was just trying to get that red earth and the contrast of the green plants. The green wasn't very great here. I was really wishing I had a dark perylene green as well. And the colours that would have been awesome from this from Art Spectrum would have been the Australian red gold and the Australian green gold. So I was kind of wishing I had those two, but I made do with what I had. And once again, that sky is just not quite the right colour. It's a bit too dull. I would have loved to have had a much brighter thalo blue. But hey, I made do with the three colours that came in this box and it was fun just to challenge myself with something totally different and not necessarily the colours that I would have chosen for it. And here are all my finished artworks and the swatch card that I made. So I used all the paper that was in the box. Here's my first one where I did cheat a bit and used the pencil as well. But happily I managed to not use anything outside of the box for any of the other artworks. This was really just a warm-up piece. And then we got into the prompt which was beautiful landscape. I don't know how beautiful they are but I had a lot of fun painting these. It was quite good for me I think. It, it got me out of my comfort zone a bit in that I wasn't using a pencil or a pen or anything to draw. I was just painting and doing it as loosely as possible but also trying to get some of the fine detail in there as well. I think this one's actually my favourite. I just quite like the way the boats are reflecting the shadows onto the water and I just quite like the color combination here. This blue works well more as a sunset blue than as a regular sky blue. In here it's a little bit too dark and too warm. I would have much preferred to have a phthalo blue as I've probably mentioned about 50 million times in this video. <laughs> phthalo blue especially for Australian landscapes is a far more useful color because our sea and sky really is that bright bright blue So this is a bit more muted, but I quite liked how the 12 apostles came out after I'd added some layers It wasn't too bad and then the last one which got a bit messy is Katajuta and once again the sky is not quite right and I've managed to get flickers all over it, but never mind <laughs> I'm just going to leave it as it is. So yeah, that was a good time. I really enjoyed this box and I'm so glad I bought it. I have not decided yet if I'm going to continue getting the subscription box, more because I do have quite a lot of art supplies already, so the likelihood of there being something in the box that I already have is probably quite high, but I think it was quite fun and I might try a couple more just to see what else they provide in there. I'm really hoping in future boxes perhaps they might provide a pen and a pencil and things like that but I mean obviously it's just going to be a total guess as to what's in there and that's all of the fun isn't it is <laughs> getting supplies and making art with them especially when it's stuff that you're not used to using like no pencils and things like that. I really liked this brush. This was my favorite thing in the box actually, although it's never going to look the same again that is well and truly permanently stained, but it was really nice and has retained a point so I may well look around for some more of these because it was really good. And here are my tubes and my lovely messy palette here. So that's all I've got today. I hope you enjoyed this video and 
I hope you enjoyed looking through the first cathartic box as much as I enjoyed opening it and using the supplies. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all again really soon. Swatch you later. Bye.